Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and talk about Logan Cooley, primarily for one reason. As an Arizona sports fan, I am just waiting for the disappointment, so we're getting Uri Slavkovsky. So let's talk about <laughs> Logan Cooley and, da- and carbon date ourselves. Let's do this. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, either way, I'm going to say this. Whether it's Slavkovsky or Cooley, I think I will be quite happy. Uh, I've mm-hmm. seen a couple of... Let's let's not uh, you know put it out there completely yet, but I've seen a couple of people murmur about Slavkovsky potentially trying out for center uh, in the NHL because of how big he is. So we could see an option there where either whichever one goes at number two, we could still potentially be pulling away with another center in uh, this third overall pick. Uh, as for myself, what I believe to be true is I think that Logan Cooley will go at number three as if you look at the organizational needs of New Jersey at number two, they already have a very young, promising roster of centermen, including Jack Hughes, Nico Heeshear, Dawson Mercer, and uh, the other kid that they just drafted recently that I cannot remember his name. Uh, so they need wingers to be backed up with those that great center core. And, man, Slavkovsky, big physical body, already looks like a man, plays against men. Makes a lot of sense to pick up at number two for them. But there are rumors going around that New Jersey, because of that surplus, could take advantage of it and then trade back. True. If someone's going to hop you know, over to second overall... What is the likelihood they're going to go after Nemec, Cooley, or Slavkovsky in your eyes? Ooh, that's a hard one. So I I personally see Cooley probably dropping to three. And the reason I say that is because I know that a lot of um, scouts see Cooley and the pure offense that he can provide, the brains and everything that he has. Uh, but the downside to that is that defensively, he is not nearly as responsible, so I don't know if people are going to be willing to take him on as a risk as a centerman, as uh, more people will say that he's more likely to be potentially a winger. This is a similar thing that happened with our own uh, Clayton Keller, is he he originally started as a centerman until he was drafted, and then everyone, yeah, he's a winger. Uh, I don't think Cooley will be a winger. I think that they, if the Coyotes did pick him up, they would try him at center. Um, but with that risk, I think that teams aren't going to trade up to second to pick him. Honestly, if my mem- or honestly, if I had an opinion, I think that people will jump up to second in order to take Slavkovsky or that other name that you just said, which is uh, Simone Nemec, who I am very enamored by. I really like his play. I really like how big he is and just his overall style. So. That could be a potential, and if that happens, that would be very interesting to see what Bill Armstrong does because at number three, if Nemec was taken at two, then all of a sudden you can pick between Slavkovsky or Cooley. So that would be an interesting decision that the Coyotes would be in if that were to happen. I mean, hey, think about it like this. Let's just say hypothetically they do get Cooley because he's this disappointing kid that's going to be a winger. Well, Clayton Keller didn't turn out that bad. And also, uh, Dylan Gunther, he's been trying out some center over the year. You could always move Gunther to center and have Cooley on the wing. I'm just yep. saying it would be a pretty nice line, be a pretty nice combination. And then Slavkovsky, pretty much the same exact design, except for try him out at center, whereas Kit Scenario, he goes over to the wing. I would assume his game would translate with his size relatively similar to a loss in Krause without being as much of a power forward. But that's just what I would assume given uh, how he would probably slot into an NHL lineup. Yeah, I I really like his play. Uh, either, any way this, this uh, pie gets cut, man, this offseason is going to be one to remember. I think that this offseason is going to define Bill, Arm- uh, yeah, Bill Armstrong's legacy as general manager of the Coyotes. This is going to be crazy. With all the cap space that he has... All of the assets that he can trade, uh, including one of them being uh, uh, Jacob Chikrin, there's there's going to be... I, I'd be very disappointed if we saw nothing this offseason. So, 
man it is it is an interesting one and i can't wait as for what logan cooley could do for this team uh, obviously, he won't be jumping in right away after his draft because I believe he's already committed to one of the colleges. Minnesota, <laughs> Michigan, one of the M colleges, I think. Uh, so he will be playing. Maybe it was Boston. I don't know. He's he's committed to a college, so he's not yeah, gonna be he's playing going to college. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna be playing till maybe the potential like final nine games of next season or the season after. I really like his play as an offensive threat. If you watch the way he thinks the game, it is that next generation. Um, we saw it with all the young kids that have been coming in recently. You know, we saw Trevor Zegras with the Michigans and uh, Svechnikov also with the Michigans and just the way they think the game. Uh, I would look at his play style closer to uh, a guy who just got drafted recently which is Matty Beneers where if you watch that kid play like these kids are learning that you don't have to hold on to the puck you can chip it into a certain space and just skate for it you know and that's not just a dump we're talking you know maybe making like a three foot little play and then getting around a guy and then you know continuing on with the play you're seeing a lot more of that coming up and it's very very interesting to watch because that creativity if you can figure that out that's another deception play that you can do to just mix it up and make it harder for defensemen to defend you so uh i i guess to kind of tie back into the draft real quick we have you said it was six of the top 45 picks and that's not including any potential chicken trades going into this draft i think it's yeah it's either six or seven we have three in the first we have uh, it's four in the second. So I think it's seven of the top 45 picks uh, next or this upcoming draft will go to the Arizona Coyotes. And then I think one of those got turned into Jack McBain's. Well, let's just say it's five assets. I was already saying how if they really wanted to, they managed it properly. They can essentially draft an entire new top line and defensive pairing. Yep. So I decided to ask, you know, you got sometimes you got to throw yourself out there, the daily mail bag or the monthly mailbag. Uh, I asked Craig Morgan if this team, as soon as next year, with how young it's going to be, because the the thing that well, about young rosters is they can take years to develop. They can also kind of boomer bust very quickly. Could they be competing for a second wild card spot as soon as next year? Not making the playoffs, just making it some sort of race. What do you think? So, it's a very interesting thought. Because a lot of people go, well, look at how bad they were this year. And obviously, that's just that just shows how bad they're going to be next year. But the thing is, is if you look at all the assets that they had on this year's team, they were all older assets, guys trying to play for something. And, you know, there, there wasn't much left in their careers. Uh, next year, we are going to see probably a, quite a large inf influx or uh, fusion of of young talent coming up from the AHL, the Carcones, you know, um, the uh, Jan Yaniks, those those players are going to be coming in. The the biggest question I'll have is if um, head coach Anya Turnier, Andre Turnier, I don't know why I messed that one up, <laughs> uh, if he can get these young kids to play as hard as the vets were this season, because. This season at the end, you know, you could see it just he didn't have Turnier, didn't have the assets to propel himself into the win column, but the effort was there. So I'd be very curious if he can keep the effort up, but actually have those assets that can produce more wins. Um, time will tell. Personally, I hope not because next year's draft <laughs> is going to have the next Connor McDavid at number one, and that is uh, uh, Bedard. Connor Bedard. Yeah, Bedard. The next McJesus. Yeah, what if he. It was Connors, Garland, McDavid, Bedard. Connors. All good players. It's a power name, apparently. <laughs> but um, yeah, Bedard is looking really good, and the Russian is looking really good too. Uh, is it Mitchkov? Metvey Mitchkov, I think, is his name. He's looking very similar to like an Alex Ovechkin type. Um, 
I'd be curious to see, you know, where he ends up because of the Russian factor. Obviously, with everything that's going on, Russian picks are going to drop, especially in this year's draft. There are going to be a lot of players that are picked up later in the first and potentially in the second. Uh, that you're going to go, why the heck did this guy drop? And it was because of, unfortunately, all the political um, problems going on right now in the world. But we are going to see some big, uh, big steals. That is for sure. And yeah, it's it's going to be crazy. It's <laughs> I'm I'm excited. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I am excited as well. I just kind of want to answer the question from my perspective as the hopeless optimist. Again, if all if the drafting goes right and they're all players that end up coming in immediately, which is an unrealistic expectation. It could get interesting. I think, realistically speaking, what, two guys from this draft are probably going to make their debuts this season. I think that's yep. probably a fair number out of those top you know, six or five assets, not including a potential chicken trade. <laughs> not including a potential chicken trade. I don't necessarily think that it's going to happen as soon as next year, but I like to wonder. And that's kind of why I wanted to ask that question and kind of get a conversation going because, like I said, with these young rosters, it can go boom or bust very quickly. So it's yeah, it's really exciting. There's a lot of really good stuff to look forward to for Coyotes hockey. And uh, apparently that was enough to get all the full season uh, glass tickets to sell out already. Uh, I don't know if you heard about that. No, I did the, the not. The ASU Arena. Well, my wife got an email trying to solicit her for season tickets and all of the full season. Not uh, every uh, – there's some that should be held for individual games. Some are half season. But all the available full season ice uh, uh, glass tickets have been sold. Last for, that she was seeing for, for ASU the Coyotes, or for the Coyotes. Yep. Wow. I was okay. shocked when <laughs> when I saw that. I do need yep. her to provide me the link too, so I can look at it from my own eyes. But still, I I was shocked that that would sell out and not like the first three rows first, like you know the, the, the top three rows. Yeah. And almost quicker than i would have expected my mantra of well the people in the east valley have more money than sense uh seemingly is already going uh more wildly than i figured <laughs>